Is your Mac Mini destined for Mars? Does your MacBook Air sound like it's ready to take off? Does your MacBook Pro sound like it's about to burst into flames? Let's face it, with Ecamm, we're creating a video stream, compressing it, sending it off into the internet, while at the same time also recording it to the local hard disk. Your processor generates a lot of heat doing all the math involved, and consequently we get a lot of heat, therefore your fans come on. And that's what we're going to talk about today. How do we manage the fans? Hi, I'm Edward Moffat. I'm a commercial videographer and photographer just outside Toronto. And today we're going to talk about this thing called Turbo Boost Switcher, which is a great utility for your Mac, why you might want it, and in particular, why you might want it in conjunction with Ecamm Live. We're going to do some tests with it on a low-end laptop and a high-end laptop, compare the results, so that you can make your own determination as to whether or not you should spend 10 bucks on this utility for your Mac. Turbo Boost is a feature of the Intel processors that allows them to speed up when there's additional work that they think can be done by going from their nominal clock speed of the CPU up to a higher clock speed. In the examples we're gonna to use today, we've got one that goes basically twice as fast and one that goes almost three times as fast when it finds that there's work that it can do. But the issue with that is, and I'll give you a concrete example, you're driving in your car and you're going on the highway at 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour, and all of a sudden you think, oh, I'm in a hurry, I should speed up. So putting the legal ramifications aside, let's say you sped up to 120 miles an hour or 180 miles an hour, 300 kilometers an hour. What would the implications be for your car if you did that, if your car could do that? First of all, it would generate a lot of heat. It would also generate a lot of noise, and the radiator would have to work many times as hard to cool the engine because it would be generating so much heat. The utility Turbo Boost Switcher addresses exactly this point. Your Intel processor is going into overdrive to process video and do recordings and show you all of the information panels that Ecamm Live gives you when you're streaming. Turbo Boost Switcher goes and deals with lowering the speed of the processor to keep the heat from being generated to keep the fans from coming on. Turbo Boost Switcher is a utility that's been around since 2013. It was invented by this fellow in Spain, uh, Ruben Garcia Perez. You know, hats off to you, Ruben. What it does is it keeps the Intel CPU from going to its maximum clock speed and thus generating lots of heat and causing the fans to come on. There's a free version, which just you manually turn Turbo Boost on and off. And there's a paid version, which is only $10. I highly recommend it which allows you to actually set up some rules that say, for example, if I'm running Ecamm Live, keep the turbo boost of my Intel processor off, and that'll eliminate or greatly reduce the noise, as we're about to see. So we have two test subjects today. We have a bottom of the line 13 inch MacBook Pro. It has a 1.4 gigahertz i5 quad core processor. That's the lowest of the low that you can get in the uh, MacBook Pros. It only has eight gigs of RAM. This particular bottom of the line laptop also comes with a 256 uh, gigabyte uh, solid state drive, and there's no graphics processor at all. The second laptop we're gonna look at is a 16 inch top of the line MacBook Pro, 2.4 gigahertz i9 processor, eight cores, 32 gigs of RAM, a two terabyte solid state disk, and a GPU with its own dedicated eight gigabytes of memory. At the bottom of the line, we have a processor that runs at 1.4 gigahertz, which is slow as it goes. And when Turbo Boost kicks in, because the Intel processor thinks it can accomplish more by speeding up, we have the ability here to jump up to 3.9 gigahertz. So that's 279% difference, almost three times as fast. So what happens, again, using the car analogy, if you took your car driving on the highway, going at highway speeds, and all of a sudden you tripled the speed? If your car could even accomplish that, you would find the engine would get very, very hot very, very quickly. The fan comes on to cool it, and you get lots of fan noise. With the top of the line MacBook Pro, we have eight cores, and the eight cores are running at 2.4 gigahertz in this particular example. When the Intel processor thinks it can speed up to accomplish more work more quickly, 
it goes up to five gigahertz, that's 208% difference. So basically doubling the speed of the processor or doubling the speed of your car, again, your car engine uh, is gonna have to deal with that heat. In our case on the laptop, that makes things very, very hot. And in the case of the top of the line, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, there's actually two fans that run at different speeds. They have their own temperature sensors and they're doing their own things. So um, you have two fans to contend with. So off the top, I said there were two tests we were gonna do. One is uh, resource consumption. I'm gonna run both of these laptops at 1080p, 60 frames a second, and we're gonna see the amount of heat that's generated, which causes the fan speed. We're gonna measure the temperatures. We're gonna look at how busy the laptops are. We're gonna look at how much noise they make. After uh, streaming live for five minutes, after five minutes, the fans go up, the fans go up a little more, and we're, then we're kind of at a, a constant maybe for the next hour. Um, and then separately on my iPhone, I'm using a tool called DB Meter Pro, which measures sound pressure. And I'm gonna use that with all of these tests, placing uh, my uh, iPhone right in front of the MacBook Pro and measuring how much noise the fans are making. So let's talk about the test results for the bottom of the line MacBook Pro to start off with. We found that the CPU jumped up to 78 degrees Celsius. The fans therefore kick in and try and cool it down, but because the fan is so tiny on a MacBook Pro, uh, certainly the base model one like that, the fan's only about this big. So um, it's going 7200 RPM, which is its maximum speed, creating lots of noise, right? The fan is blasting, but the machine is only 25% busy. Measuring the sound, uh, we had 52 decibels for the fan noise. When we enabled Turbo Boost Switcher and we're streaming live with Ecamm, we found that the temperature only got as high as 74 degrees Celsius. Now, that's only four degrees. You think, well, that's not very much difference, but it was enough that the fans only got up to 3,400 RPM, which is less than half of the top speed, therefore quite a bit quieter. Interestingly enough, the machine was busier because rather than individual cores in the Intel processor jumping up to their maximum power, the load was shared more across all the processors. So the machine was a little bit busier. But the bottom line for most people is that the machine runs quieter. 30% less sound is an awful lot. For the top of the line MacBook Pro, the results are kind of similar. Um, we saw the processor temperature jump up to 72 degrees Celsius and the left side fan to 4700 RPM and the right side fan to 4400 RPM. The machine was 86% idle on average, so basically it was only 14% busy. It was still making a fair amount of noise with the fans running at 54 decibels. When we enable Turbo Boost Switcher, the 16 inch MacBook Pro, the temperature drops down, again, only four degrees Celsius. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it meant that the fans ran 34% slower at 3,500 uh, on the left side and 3,300 on the right side. And that is enough to cause it to be 38% quieter. The load got shared across the eight cores and so the machine became a bit more busy, but it was still basically 80% idle. Okay, I said there was a second test and the second test was around battery life. Basically what I did was I ran the first test, was streaming out using Ecamm and after the five minute long streaming test, I simply pulled the power from the laptop to see what would happen. And we wanted to see, obviously we're starting at 100% battery, it was fully charged. We wanted to run the laptop until the laptop failed. So with the 13 inch MacBook Pro, when I pulled the plug while streaming, I was able to continue streaming for an hour and three minutes. When we were doing the test with the Turbo Boost switcher, disabling Turbo Boost on the processor, we got more than half an hour more. That's crazy uh, for battery life. So 51% improvement on the top of the line MacBook Pro, we see a similar sort of thing that was able to stream for an hour and five minutes from battery. When we disabled Turbo Boost using the Turbo Boost switcher, we got an hour and 26 minutes. So that's an improvement of 32%. 
So I want to summarize the results we got. The improvements were more pronounced on the low-end MacBook Pro. And there's a couple of reasons for that. But the most important one is that the MacBook Pro is very, very thin. There is only one fan. Because the fan is so small, it has to run at a very, very high rate. With the larger MacBook Pro, we've got two fans. Both those fans are bigger than the one fan in the smaller MacBook Pro. The case on the 16-inch uh, MacBook Pro is a little bit bigger. Um, and there is better venting uh, underneath the 16-inch MacBook Pro. So that's why the difference is so pronounced. But look at the battery life. Wow, like that's pretty astonishing, leveraging uh, a Turbo Boost switcher. And just a quick word on RAM consumption. Um, sure, you can load up your Ecamm Live with um, many screens and overlays, and you can plug in Zoom and Skype and, uh, and, and that sort of thing. So you can make things pretty complicated, but most people aren't doing all of those things simultaneously. And with four and three quarter gigabytes of RAM consumed, you still had three and a quarter gigabytes of RAM doing nothing. So if you added Skype or Zoom or Skype and Zoom, uh, you still should have enough horsepower uh, and certainly memory to accomplish what you need to accomplish. I was surprised how well it performed even on battery uh, and even with Turbo Boost uh, disabled, leveraging our new friend, Turbo Boost Switcher. Final thing I'll say is that my results were based on tasks I ran once. I think they're indicative of what you would find, but your mileage will vary, as they say. I would suggest download the free version of Turbo Boost Switcher, try it out on your machine. I think you will find similar results. If they work for you, I would suggest downloading the pro version, giving Ruben the 10 bucks I think he richly deserves for creating and maintaining this application. The most recent update to this application was I think a week ago. I think that's it. So thanks very much. If you've got questions or comments, drop them down below. Uh, I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Thanks so much.